Cindy the Psychic Soup is a character that has left fans of the boys pretty intrigued. I believe this character is based off of Silver Kincaid from the comics. So today I'm going to walk you through those potential comic origins, Silver's comrades, and then get to some speculation as to what Cindy's capable of in the series. Hold on to your heads and hit that subscribe button and bell. I'm Chris Carr, and today we're taking a closer look at Silver Kincaid and the G-Men from the boys. Before we dive in, I want to give a shout out to our super nerd sponsor of the day, Kevin Brown. Kevin's the real hero. Thanks to folks like Kevin, we get to keep giving y'all comic and cartoon content. So thank you so much. Spoiler warning! Of course, you guys, we're discussing some of the events that go down in both the television series as well as the graphic novel. If you aren't caught up on the latest episode, or you don't want me to potentially reveal anything by diving into the comics, you might want to hold off on this video. I'll be here when you're ready. All right, on to the telekinetic. If we're to assume that Cindy is based off of any character from Garth Ennis's The Boys, I'd have to go with Silver Kincaid. Cindy's powers appear to most closely align with hers. And it would be business as usual for Kripke & Co. to take a character from the pages and augment them for the series. Looking at you, Love Sausage. Silver Kincaid was based on the Marvel X-Men characters Jean Grey and Emma Frost. We see their telekinetic abilities mirrored in her psychic snuffing out powers. Silver has bright white hair, much like many depictions of Emma Frost. But in Silver's case, her hair went white because of a horseback riding scare. Frost is also capable of blasting psionic energy that causes mental pain or unconsciousness. In a similar vein, Silver seems to specifically target the brain, though she seems to do it with a lot less nuance. When Jean Grey is in her phoenix form, she can create and manipulate matter and energy, and can change things on a cellular level should she choose to. Again, Silver's powers seem to be about manipulating energy psychically, specifically manipulating gravity and power. Further hitting the nail on the head that Jean Grey, the Phoenix, influenced Silver's creation is the statue of the character having flying like the Phoenix etched onto it. Another character I think we can take inspiration from here is Mercury. Since Mercury came out in 2003 and the boys didn't get published until 2006, I feel like there's room for speculation that Cecily Kincaid could have influenced Silver's creation or at the very least be her namesake. Cecily, or Mercury, was another X-Men. This mutant was capable of turning her entire body into a liquid metal Mercury-like substance. She's the Alex Mack of the X-Men. In addition to her shape-shifting ability, Cecily was extremely difficult to track or influence via telepathy while in her Mercury form. In the boys' comics, Silver Kincaid was one of the many children kidnapped by John Godelkin to be put in his superpowered team known as the G-Men. At a secret training facility in upstate New York, these gifted youngsters were given weekly injections of Compound V until they developed superpowers or perished. Upon their powers activation, the kids were raised with unlimited bank accounts and simply had to follow one rule, protect the secrets of the G-Men and their founder at all costs. Godel can reinforce this rule by sexually abusing the children and allowing other key officers of Vought to do the same. I know Vought's evil, but why did they turn a blind eye to this pedophile? Well because he created the most lucrative stable of superheroes ever. Though John isn't superpowered himself, he often engages in an us versus them narrative, pitting normal against the superpowered. This was part of the G-Men's appeal. Outcasts, orphans, runaways, who rise up and become superheroes. If society didn't accept them, they'd still fight for society. Godokin was like a golden goose for Vought, creating one successful spin-off team after the next, including the G-Force, G-Brits, G-Nomads, G-Coast, G-Style, and G-Wiz. There's also a preschooler group called the Prewiz, which Vought tried to stop Godelkin from doing. Following this secret keeper oath of the G-Men, Silver's role on the team more often than not was to eliminate other superpowered individuals who Vought found to be quote unquote off message. Silver eventually reached out to the CIA. Susan Rayner would convince her to work for them as a spy, but unfortunately, this only further exacerbated Silver's delicate mental state. Triggered by returning to the very place where Godelkin kidnapped her, Silver has a complete breakdown and turns her powers onto herself, bleeding out from her eyes, nose, and mouth, resulting in her own grisly demise. Silver's death prompted Rainer and the CIA to investigate the G-Men. It was revealed at her funeral that she wasn't particularly liked by her teammates. They got bored. These faux X-Men included Critter, a play at Hank McCoy, AKA Beast, Groundhog, a take on Wolverine, Nubia, a stand-in for Storm, and Five-O, a Cyclops parody who shot laser beams and dressed like a cop who flat out states that he thought Silver was a tease. In the end, all the G-Men are eradicated after Vought decides a pedophile leader is way too much of a liability. All of them, straight up murdered. Yep, even the pre-Wiz team. Those kiddos are placed in a shipping container, placed on a flight, and dumped from the air into the ocean. Yeesh. Now obviously though, the television show is taking a lot of different turns from the comic. I mean, case in point, that version of Rainer lives, and our girl got got. If Cindy is indeed modeled after Silver Kincaid, 
That leads me to wonder if we will be seeing the rest of the G-Men in the series. Or, perhaps, if those characters are being reworked for the Boy spin-off series that's been announced. It would be interesting to see if someone as depraved as Godelkin would be running the Soup University that's been said to be the setting of this offshoot series, and if Cindy, or any other Sage Grove individuals, were taken from that college after being difficult or non-compliant. When it comes to the Boy series, we first saw Cindy on screen when M.M., Frenchie, and Kimiko went undercover into the Sage Grove facility. While Cindy's powers are never explicitly stated, we know that they have telekinetic capabilities, as they're seen throwing massive objects around with a flick of a wrist and crushing skulls simply by clenching a fist. We know that Cindy escaped the Sage Grove facility, as they're seen hitchhiking and catching a lift with a stranger at the end of episode six, and walking off to the Golden Girls theme song, no less. But I have a feeling Cindy is not a friend we're thankful for. It is heavily implied that since we see Cindy popping heads like it ain't no thing, that Cindy is the soup responsible for exploding Susan Rayner's brain right before the boy's eyes. Now, I'm using a lot of implied and speculated, and it would seem because, well, we haven't been flat out told what Cindy is capable of. We haven't seen the limits to their powers. Does Cindy need to be within a certain physical range to activate these powers? Do they have to recharge? Or can they toss things and blow minds all day long? And where are they going at the end of this episode? Since episode seven opened with that recap showing Rainer's death, we knew there was gonna be some similar violent end to somebody. But boy, did I underestimate just how high this episode's body count was gonna be. Even though we've seen Cindy perform a similar gruesome act, those kills looked more like the crushing of a head, an implosion as opposed to an explosion. Also, it stands to reason that if Cindy was the one causing all this mayhem, wouldn't Stormfront have been the first person murdered? After being experimented on by Stormfront, I'd say Cindy has an axe to grind with that soup above anyone else. Oh, hey, I guess we can add Cindy to the list of potential Stormfront killers. You should check out that video if you haven't yet, by the way. I'm also interested to see if Cindy will reveal any other interesting powers down the line. The actor portraying Cindy, S. Hoddlemoser, is an award-winning contortionist from Toronto. So I'm hoping we'll see that skill set factor into future scenes with Cindy. I mean, it seems like a waste not to showcase such a cool talent. Fingers crossed we see some wicked bendy moves while Cindy is causing chaos. Of course, these are just my thoughts on the character. What do you think of Cindy? And what do you think they're capable of? Is Cindy working for Vought? For Stormfront? Or are they a free agent? What do you think of Silver Kincaid? Hit me with all of your hot takes in the comments below. If you liked this video, give us a thumbs up and click to the left for more super videos. Thank you so much to our donors on Patreon, and thank you for watching. Until next week, I'll see you, Space Cowboy.